Patients with cardiac defibrillators are at very high risk of subsequent events. There are about 15% of patients with devices implanted for primary prevention who develop even in one year, and about 50 to 60% in those who happen to have prior arrhythmia or had arrhythmia after implantation. There is no really good treatment for this condition, and a uh, list of drugs that could be used is really short. Ranolazine is a drug which is on the market both in US and in Europe, which is used for angina and has been implicated that it might have antiarrhythmic properties. There were preclinical studies as well as anecdotal clinical studies indicating that this drug might be antiarrhythmic. And this is why we designed this study as a randomized trial to determine whether ranolazine will have antiarrhythmic effect in comparison to placebo. Study is designed as a randomized clinical trial, double-blinded, with ranolazine and placebo given. Ultimate dose of ranolazine was 1,000 mg twice a day, and the trial uh, identified high-risk patients, and high-risk patients were following one of the three categories. First one was so-called secondary prevention patients, those who happened to have arrhythmic event prior to implantation. Second category are so-called primary prevention patients, those who didn't have event before implantation, but happened to have event after implantation sometime, it could be one year, three years later, those, was, those people were eligible. And the third category is also primary prevention patient, but those who never got any arrhythmias to date, but they had high risk criteria like white QRS complex, atrial fibrillation, uh, elevated blood urea, urea nitrogen, and some uh, arrhythmias on Holter monitoring. So these three categories of patients were enrolled in the trial. We enrolled 1,012 patients. 510 were randomized to ranolazine and 502 to placebo. We followed them for about 28 months on average. We had quite high event rate, as I mentioned earlier, which we expected will be high taking the, into account the nature of the patient. We had 37% event rate in total, 27% of VT, VFs, and 15% of deaths in this trial which are pretty high number for this patient population. Our study showed that primary endpoint, which was defined as VTVF or DES, was reduced by about 16%, which didn't reach significance. So you could say that primary endpoint wasn't met. We had p-value of 0.117, close but not enough. When we analyze VTVF alone, Reduction was about 19%, but still we had p-value of 0.1, so not significant. Reduction was there. Death was not affected by uh, drug at all. Hazard ratio was about 1. And the same with shocks uh, by ICDs. No difference. However, when we analyze ventricular arrhythmias treated by antitachycardia pacing, which are slightly slower arrhythmias than those requiring shocks, we observe significant 27% reduction. However, when we analyze data on repeated recurrent shocks, not just time to first shock, our reduction was even greater, was 35% reduction, also significant. So bottom line, we did not meet primary endpoint, but at the same time, the endpoint of arrhythmia, VTVF, was reduced significantly, especially VT. So to some extent, we are satisfied that uh, there is a drug which is already on the market that could be used in Europe and in US for reducing risk of ventricular tachycardia. And obviously, there is limitations that the drug did not reduce also uh, arrhythmias uh, requiring shock, but this is probably related to the mechanism of the drug. If you look at this patient population, as I mentioned at the beginning, there is no really much choice apart from amiodarone, which is rarely used because of the toxic effect and potentially 
um, issues with, uh, with uh, higher mortality associated with this medication. Therefore, ranolazine brings interesting uh, opportunity to reduce risk of arrhythmia, which are frequent arrhythmia, more frequent than those requiring shocks. Those arrhythmias which are uh, treated by antitachycardia anti pacing are arrhythmias at the rate of less than 220 beats per minute. And plenty of patients have this kind of arrhythmia, whereas minority require uh, higher uh, energy shock uh, due to faster arrhythmia. So vast majority of patients like those eligible for rate trial would benefit uh, from this study. We would definitely be interested in increasing number of medications going toward uh, ventricular tachyarrhythmia. There is very limited selection at this moment. Ranolazine adds some uh, important uh, help to this patient. However, still the question remains how to diminish even those faster arrhythmias. Since ranolazine, based on what we learn from the rate trial, is not really affecting faster arrhythmias, there is question how to eventually approach those. There are other options like uh, ablation procedures, and those ablation procedures might be of help, but still the vast majority of patients would like to find a medication that would minimize the risk of these ventricular fibrations.